Hello everyone, thanks for joining. So this webinar is connected for understanding about the microservices design patterns. Okay, so the, we have an agenda. So what is the agenda that we're going to follow is, so we're going to take a look at the design patterns. Why do we need the design patterns? And what are the design patterns that organizations are following? What is actually microservices is all about? What are the principles behind microservices? And what are the design patterns? And we are going to see a hands-on session on how do we enable the microservices, and that's what we're going to see for today. Okay. So let's move on to the what are the design patterns and how does this design patterns will help us to implement? So why does the design patterns will work? So for example, when we have a number of processes enabled, let's assume a scenario. We have something called Amazon is one of the e-commerce page. So Amazon will have a number of processes. One is direct sales, another one is payments, another one is couriers, another one is like a dealers like a, or else shopkeepers. All the shopkeepers will continue to add the offers and everything, right? So likewise, if there are multiple process which will be enabled in order to implement any process. Let's assume a scenario, you're building all these applications in a monolithic application. If there is any error which happens to one of the application, so you, what happens, say for example, there are some issues with the delivery. Because of the reason that you have issues with the delivery, you cannot start making the transactions or you cannot stop the people who are actually purchasing the products, right? Let the issue to be present on the delivery side, let them fix it. So meanwhile, I don't want that particular delay should be impacting this, whatever the sales should be that people are actually purchasing, right? So earlier people used to implement in these type ways where it, 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 it used to be a, a monolithic applications which people used to build. And that's where it will make your entire, if somewhere something or some small part of your application went down, it will make your entire application to go down and which should never happen, right? So this, that's where the developer development team cannot keep your applications process two and whereas there, there are out of, out of three running, right? So that's where we end up with having something called a design patterns. So by using these design patterns, the team working on various projects use the same pattern of similar applications, which means you will end up with using the same pattern, but they will be building different different applications so that the dependency with other applications can be reduced. And even if something fails, it will make sure that, uh, that the, the impact will be applicable only for that particular area, right? Not to the entire application. So that's how we will end up with doing these activities. So what are the different design patterns we have? So in earlier days, what, what used to happen, people used to have only a single machine which will make sure that you will be able to make sure that, okay, all the applications will continue to run. There will be only one application, one app, one web service or other one app services will continue to run. So if somewhere something goes down, your entire application will not be available. You cannot say like, okay, Amazon is not at all available completely because some issue with the courier or delivery side. And I cannot say like that I'm not able to make any changes. I'm not able to make any purchases, which should not happen. And it will have a huge impact on the sales obviously overall so likewise if your application is down for four or five times in a year yeah that's it so you'll end up with choosing you'll end up with having a millions of dollars of loss right and which you can never claim it back which you can never come back and never be able to able to claim it back so that's why the design patterns are something which are used like most of the organizations are almost all the organizations are using nowadays which occurs, which solves a problem that occurs when multiple instances while designing software applications or a software frameworks, right? So when I when I talk about a framework, either be it anything, either be it of application, be it your framework, anything that you built. So how this, uh, how your business processes will be, what exactly this microservices is. So basically, whenever you have any of the application which is created, you will have your core domain and each and every application which supports in order to make your application in order to make your entire various processes to run and up and running is what we call it as design patterns right so microservices be it a microsoft architecture be it a architectural style uh, uh, which whatever the, whatever the way that you are going to define your microservices which will make sure that your entire application will run and whatever the services which will continue to run themselves or either self-serviced contain uh, uh, components or whatever, right? So I say, for example, if some, some developer is making a change and they want to deploy the changes because of some deployment which got failed, again, you cannot say like, my application is going down. So your DevOps processes will continue to run and which will enable your overall business capabilities, right? So what are the principles? What are the principles which are built behind these microservices? What are the major principles of building this design patterns? First thing is the independent and autonomous services, which means one application should run without having dependency with the other one. So they are supposed to be running individual independent. 
and they are also be highly scalable but tomorrow you might say like okay hey this number of sales that we are going to look at is maybe one uh, one billion to it has increased it to one billion you should be able to scale up any of your applications to an extent that okay you should be able to capable of should be capable of supporting any volume of the data or any volume of transactions or whatever it is happening and decentralization it's not that okay hey you're you're giving a very easiest chance that okay your entire application may go down because of some issue with the thing should be decentralized in a way that even though some somewhere something happens and it's, it does it should not impact your entire application and you should be resilient you should be able to rebuild automatically whenever something goes wrong and you're also supposed to load the data on real time so do a load balancing on the real time which means say for example if suddenly there are a number of users who are coming who are visiting your web page as increase should automatically balance your data so that the request will go to in parallel to all the applications so instead of making only one server or one application or one container that is getting uh, overloaded right so of course apart from that we also have few more fundamentals of availability so what is availability your application should be highly available it's not that okay hey as i said sometimes your application might go down or it is not going to work or continuous delivery through a devops which means whenever someone wanted to make any changes they should be able to move the changes as soon as possible without taking too much of time earlier people used to take a, a week or month of time where they used to have freezing time you know to make sure that the changes will go on into production and we don't want that to happen the changes are supposed to be moved into production environment without having any issues and without spending too much of time of a developer and there are also a, a, the seamless integration of APIs should happen which means whenever there are some APIs which are created and the APIs should continue to run with the and they should continue to do whatever the jobs it's supposed to do so now iteration from failures which means that as I said so every individual of a component is supposed to be isolated from failures it's not that okay if somewhere something fails or some developer made a mistake it should not like okay hey your entire application will go down or nothing is available it should not happen like that so okay let that let that to be we are not available for some time let the other applications to be available let the other applications to consume the data and process the data and make sure that okay it, it should be at least up and running and that's what also includes with high availability as well so automatically if some disaster recovery which happened automatically you're supposed to your application supposed to be uh, provisioned automatically so likewise these are the multiple principles that you must your application must follow you know to make sure that you are fully up and running in the microservices way right so what is the structure learning that we can go through with the devops so if you take a look at the first one that we are going to look at is the evaluation of microservices so which means what are the microservices which are how the microservices concepts has been came into picture how they have been implemented and you'll also see some hands-on examples for each and everything so microservices architecture you'll also understand about how the microservices can be architectured what are the components which are involved and then what, what are the design patterns that we will follow in my microservices and when you're implementing such a microservices in your application how the security needs to be handled with respect to the data with respect to the code with respect to the implementation with respect to authorization authorization and everything and along with the hands-on you'll be able to see that all the examples okay so now as i said so you'll also end up with having the uh, the, the implementation of hands-on sessions and how do we deploy them how do we implement all these activities and you'll also see how how these applications can be implemented you'll also be able to notice them and you'll have uh, reference architectures given so how the how some of the topmost business applications like uh, either be it uh, as i said uber or either amazon so like these kind of applications are how these applications are working how they are being implemented and you're also going to take a look at how those things can be implemented here okay so now what is that we're going to do is we will take a, a small part which is also pending so let me finish that so for example if there are some applications so if, let's say for example there are some some of the what are the different design patterns that we will use so let's say for example you want to implement any any of the web application so if you say for example so there is something called an aggregator is an application which is running so in case you might have been expected to extract the data from different different sources and you'll end up with using multiple apis right so you're not to connect to or, or enable all those applications you'll end up with having multiple api gateways which can help you to connect and then able to start extracting the data able to send the request in, in whatever the form either you talk about get method or either put method or whatever it is right so that uh, so that the api gateways are something which will help you to uh, make any so for example you, you want to make sure that you want to create any applications to start communicating with your other applications and if you want to make different applications to start communicating or be it as sending some response and then processing something and you can enable all these things using api gateways and then if you want to have uh, different patterns like for example you want to have a chain or a chain responsibility 
which means that say for example if service a completes then only i want to send a request to service b and if service b completes and then only i want to process the service c so likewise you might end up with having different different dependencies with previous sessions also that is one way of pattern or asynchronous means that asynchronous means that say for example whether irrespective of the whether other other process runs or not so all the servers can communicate with each other but they do not have to communicate with the sequentially which means every service to every service will continue to run but it doesn't mean that okay it has to go in a sequence uh, like the like the previous example that we saw right so it is not that okay one service service a complete generally service b will be complete nothing will like that so you just just that okay hey once you place the order and you will receive a confirmation and you will receive your, your delivery person will receive another confirmation stating that you are supposed to deliver so it doesn't mean that okay you, you after you receive an email only your delivery person should receive your content or anything nothing like that. the process will continue to work as expected irrespective of what is happening on other applications so in case if some, something fails then somewhere fails okay then you can you make sure that okay continue to process make sure that the other process will be up and running they will be taking care of the data processing and everything that is right so we'll also have a database as well in case if you want to deal with the database file service or shared databases if you want to deal with so that multiple uh, your multiple applications will continue to use your shared databases. You can also play around with all those options which can be enabled using these microservices. We'll also have event sourcing at the same time. Say, for example, what is event sourcing? Let's say you have a presentation layer, you have different different events which are happening. You might say like event is in the sense in a general way, you can consider it as event is nothing but uh, consider it like a transaction. Say, for example, if you talk about web applications, you might say, hey, we have an event where someone has purchased some product. You might consider that as something called an event. So how the event will be considered okay how the event is going to you know the same event might have to trigger multiple transactions right say for example if you make any any, any single transaction in a mobile app your balance should be reduced your transaction the statements has to be updated and you are also supposed to give a notification to the user the final end user also say for example you might say any transaction which creates your rba the government has to send the information to the rba likewise there are multiple processes which should should trigger based on the same event itself if out of these multiple events if something uh, uh, is uh, any of the event is, is not happening you might, it might end up still having some issues with your application so likewise you'll be able to implement all these activities using different different so let's say for example if your internet banking is not working properly if your transactions are not working properly you might end up with having a lot of issues. Yeah, let, let them let the mobile applications to run at least because of that reason i cannot say my data is not working my data is not available right so likewise we'll be able to make use of this event sourcing activities and everything uh we'd beat any external system if you're in, 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 in any cloud network or if you're in any other network you can make use of this using any other networks also it's not that okay you will end up with like dealing with your application within a single network but on top of it you'll also have a branch so what is the branch so which means you'll have will maintain the dependency with uh dependency with uh, one or more independent microservices you say like okay hey b is a parent and a is a child and A will have a dependency with C, and then D will, have, will be having dependency with C. So these kind of applications can be implemented using a branch principle. So likewise, you'll be able to deal with these applications in uh, microservices. Okay. So we also have a few more examples, like especially say for example, if you want to implement using uh, CQRS, so typically we call it as a command query responsibility and segregator. So if there are there is a, some commands which are getting updated especially for the internet banking unless otherwise if you don't make the update unless otherwise if you don't get your final outcome you're not supposed to take you're not supposed to make your applications to move forward right so which, which means say for example uh, you take an example of a social network for example and it's not that okay you're supposed to make the make every transaction to say for example you tweeted something it's not that every one of everyone who is supposed to be subscribed has to be intimated immediately right so that's okay let the let the other people to get the outcome maybe after some time maybe after a few some seconds or anything so let, but, but they're supposed to get it as soon as possible it doesn't mean that okay it's supposed to happen like a, a transaction databases where it's supposed to get the, all the updates within a few, few, few fraction of seconds right so likewise based on different type, type of applications you are have to choose different different ways of implementing these applications and we also have circuit breaker as well so you have uh, in case if you want to deal with any kind of like circuit where you in case if something fails you want to make sure that okay all the entire application is not going to move forward say for example if you take a, a bus transactions for example and you're not supposed to make uh, any other transaction to go on because without you confirming the ticket of a person you cannot say like i will give a ticket to another people right because there might be a duplicate so only one customer might end up with getting the duplicate for every one ticket itself that you're purchased and it, the person might not leave you stating that okay i i don't have a ticket even though i got the confirmation right 
so likewise likewise there are different different applications which will use these different different types of patterns based on the whatever the requirements you will be choosing those design patterns and you will be implementing those things according to that so let's take a look at a small example of how do we create a web application if you see here i'm going to create a sample web application okay so i've opened a visual studio let me just quickly show you that so you can see your visual studio can be implemented here and in case if you see i want to create it as a container instead of making it as some some other application instead of making it as a normal application i want to enable as a container so now what is it i can do i can quickly go to let me just open this so now if you see here i'm going to create a, a sample web application so i'll go to view and i can search for uh, solution explorer and i'm going to create a normal web application if you see the moment that i select this you'll be able to see the web application so now if i want to make any changes i'll go to page and i'll go to any of the index page or anything for example i'll just quickly make some small change we'll we'll see how do we deploy it okay so let me just quickly make some change let's say for example i'm going to uh, learn about uh, i'll just add it as a i'll just make some change um learn about microservices likewise so now what is it i'll do i'll just quickly make some change and i'll just rebuild the solution whatever the solution that i have built here so i'll just say like i'll just right click and say like rebuild once again let, let the application to rebuild yeah so i'll just try to publish it in case so what is it i'll do i'll i'm going to publish this you know, you know maybe i can also continue to publish in any of the web application so if i have a vm i can publish it over there if i have something else i can also submit it you can see that i've already integrated with git repo i can continue to maintain all my code and everything within this git repo itself so what i'll do is i'll just continue to uh, i'll just try to deploy this small web application in any of the uh, maybe an azure cloud so since it's visual studio and i have already have azure cloud already created i'll set up as azure in case if you want to do it from a docker repository also you can start doing that as part of docker registry so I'll, I'll just enable it as a normal uh, web application in this case instead of doing anything like this i'll say next okay now it will it'll ask for whatever the subscription that you're supposed to create and if you don't have any web application again you can see you have an option so you can also start creating a web application here so i don't have any web application which is already hosted in the cloud app and i'll be able to provide all the details over here i can create some sample resource group i can take any hosting plan which is available maybe i'll go for a free free hosting plan i'll go for the free hosting plan i'll just say okay now i'll say create so it's nothing but it's, it's going to run in the azure cloud which has uh, got my subscription it's going to create app service everything within here itself i don't need to even log in into the web application it might take a couple of minutes because it has to create all the all the virtual machines it has to create all the containers everything in the back end it'll take as a first time activity uh, one time activity will take some little time okay so it is now created if you see here i also have multiple options of deployment slots i don't want to talk about all these things i'll just say finish so which means i'm going to create this web application i'm just quickly going to deploy into a web application which is created in the azure hosting okay let me just quickly create it okay so this is getting added so once the deployment added you will be able to start uh, deploying your application so meanwhile uh, there is also one small request So I'm going to publish this web application. So if you see here, the web application is now getting deployed. Okay, so let it get deployed. It will take some couple of minutes to get deployed. So that once it is deployed, I'll give you. Uh, so all the Git repo, maintaining the Git repo, everything is already been taken care, of, right? So now you don't need to worry about all the implementations and everything. So earlier it used to be, it used to take very long time. Nowadays we don't need to. It's just within a few fraction of minutes, I'll be able to build a web application. I'll be able to start deploying it. I'll be able to start looking at the results. 
whatever the weather I'm comfortable with, right? So I don't need to take too much of time to deploy all these applications. So you can see within five minutes, I'll be able to create a web application. Within a five minutes, I'll be able to deploy it. I don't need to, I don't need to wait for any other, uh, any other admins or anyone, right? So I can, I can do all these things very easily. Okay, it's still publishing. It will take some time because as a one-time activity, it will take some time to publish. So if you see here, this application is deployed and it is getting opened here. You can see this has been deployed. You should be you should, all of you should be able to access this web application now. You can see this is a web application. You can see learn about microservices. This is what the web application that we created. So once it is created, obviously you must come to your Azure portal. You must make sure that you'll be deleting your resource group because unless otherwise you don't delete the resource group unnecessarily, it'll be paying, it'll, it'll, it'll be costing on the back end. So once you want, once you're done with it, you can start deleting your application and everything. So you'll be able to uh, close all those activities. Okay, it's pretty easy and very straightforward. You can implement these web applications very easily using uh, so all the back end applications like DevOps and everything can be integrated very easily. You'll be able to take care of them very uh, in a very few fraction of seconds. Okay, yeah, cool. So I think that's pretty much it that I have to cover. Thank you all, thank you very much, and hope to see you in any of the coming sessions. Thank you.